All right, we're live. Welcome everybody to this week's Empower Call. Um, my name is Mindy Wender, and today, and I know last week we kind of discussed this as well, and we had an awesome guest speaker last week who was also in the test group, and now we have one of my favorite people in the entire world. We have been on this journey together for, I don't even know how long, but years, um, and it's my great friend, Meg, oh, I almost said Meg Wazinski. Uh, Meg, tell me how to pronounce your new name. Cause, wait, don't tell me, actually. Kaz <laughs> Kozlowski. Yeah, nice job. Yay! <laughs> I'm just so used to calling her Meg Wazinski. So, okay, so we have Meg, my good friend Meg, on the phone. Like I said, we've been in business together in the health and fitness industry for years now. And we've kind of just been, we've always clicked. We always, you know, worked together and uh, supported each other. And Meg's just super chill, down to earth person. Um, and so that's why I'm just so excited to have her on to not only talk to me because I'm excited to hear what she has to say because her and I haven't had a conversation about this yet but also so I can share this conversation with you guys it's gonna be super laid back I'm just gonna have Meg just share her experience so um, before I get into what the topic is and everything although you guys already know I wanted to give you a little intro of Meg first of all first and foremost like I said Meg is just like a super nice like just humble down to earth person but on top of that she's a wife and she's a mom of like the cutest little baby girl ever well i guess she's not a baby anymore she's two but um and she's also just business wise i know there's some customers that will be listening to this as well so if you don't know what this stuff means no worries it just means that she's basically a badass but she's a 15 star diamond which is the highest rank that you can reach in the company uh, she's also a six star, so you can have other business centers, multiple business centers. So again, if that's confusing to you, just don't worry about it. Again, she's just a badass. She's a six star in her second CBC. Her third CBC, she's a three star. Her fourth CBC, she's a one star. She's uh, elite 10. That means that she was like in the top 10 out of all the coaches, all the coaches. She was in the top 10 in 2013. She's five time elite coach, which is like the top uh, point ones, it's like the top, top people of the entire network. And she's been an elite coach five times in a row. She's going on six this year. Uh, she's a member of the Millions Club, a Success Club 10 legend. And like, again, as I said, she's just such a great person. So um, today what Meg and I are going to just be sharing with you is the fact that Meg was picked out of all these people. She was picked to be one of the test group participants for the 80 day obsession program that's going to be coming out that you guys know we've been talking about nonstop and we're all super pumped about it so she was actually she's already done the program like she's done it but on top of that she was like in a test group so meaning like well i'll have Meg discuss it but it's like on the next level it's like you are like in the test group and um she also got to be in the in a group with autumn and autumn helped her through this stuff along with the other test group participants so i wanted meg to come on today and usually she's talking and teaching about business and how she grew her business throughout the years but today we're just going to be talking about her experience through this test group um because i know we're all really excited for this program to come out but we also some of us are still unsure of what to expect. So I think this call will be really great for us. So Meg, I'm just gonna turn it over to you and mute myself. Sure, thank you, Mindy. Thank you for that introduction. Hopefully everyone can see and hear me. Hey guys, okay, so you're gonna see me sipping my apple cider vinegar water right now because my daughter just came down with another cold and I'm like, heck no, I'm not getting sick before Christmas. So if you see me like stop and sip and the water looks kind of weird, it's not alcohol, I promise. It's apple cider vinegar. Um, you didn't know that helps you from getting sick. But anyways, Mindy, I'm so excited to talk to the coaches on your team as well as some of the clients and kind of give you what I would suggest doing and how to look at 80 Day Obsession and a little bit about my experience with it because I think for a lot of people, they're overwhelmed, right? They're like, oh, this program looks amazing. I don't know if I can do it, right? Like it's, a, it's 80 days, it's a huge commitment. And guys, yes, I've been a coach for eight years, Mindy. It's been eight years that we've been, a co been coaches. And I look at, you know, my own transformation over the last eight years 
and I look at the fact that I'm a nutritionist, but I also have issues with food, you guys. And you know, I've gone through my eating disorders and I've gone through moments where I've been super strict and, and moments where I wasn't so strict. And you know, I think a lot of people feel scared of the fact that it's called obsessed, right? 80 day obsession. And you're thinking, oh my God, like I don't, sorry if I said God, <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know what to expect because that's a big commitment. And what if I, you know, become too obsessed that it becomes too much, you know? And that was a big fear for me. And like Mindy said, I got picked to be a part of the test group and it came at a time that I wasn't, I wasn't ready to fully commit to a program because my husband and I, like Mindy said, we have a, a, a two-year-old. Uh, she just she's about 25 months actually, and we started to get our heads together for baby number two and starting for baby number two. But I very strongly believe in when an experience or an opportunity comes your way like that, one that's like once in a lifetime, which is what you guys have right now. You can't pass it up. You cannot pass it up. No, uh oh, I gotta turn that off or it's gonna drive me crazy. Facebook messages. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like a cat, you guys. I'll be like, or a squirrel. I'll be like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, focus back in. So when you have an opportunity like that that comes your way that is like a once in a lifetime thing, you have to do it. No, the timing may not be perfect. You may not be ready fully for it, but you have to make a decision, you guys. And the fact that as coaches, you have the opportunity to fully 100% commit to a brand new program, something that has never been done before, you guys, 80 different workouts. I'm like getting hot and sweating thinking about it because it's such an amazing program, you guys. And you have the chance to work closely with Autumn. And everyone's like, so if this group is like thousands of people, how is she going to do it? You guys, it's Autumn Calories. She can do anything. Okay, she can do anything. And she's fully committed to helping you guys through this program. No, you might not be messaging one on one because that's a lot for her. But if you have a question, she's going to answer it. Okay. When I was picked for the test group, like I said, it wasn't the best time for us, but I had to tell my husband, this is something I need to do because I know I'm not gonna have another opportunity like this, okay? So while you think, oh wow, how does she get to be a test group participant? How do I be a test group participant? I know they have all this stuff that they look for, but you guys, you have the opportunity right now, right now to be in a test group. You don't have to be picked by corporate, okay? You're pretty much telling yourself right now, screw you corporate, I'm gonna be a test group participant right now. You have that opportunity, okay? So I want you guys to think about where you're at right now in your own fitness journey, okay? So for me, before doing 80 Day Obsession, I was like hit or miss, okay? Like I said, we were just, just starting to try for baby number two, so it was like, I had like this mentality where it's like, I need to be the healthiest I can be before this baby. And then I'd be like, oh, but if I get pregnant, I can eat whatever I want. You know, like you have just like this in between. So for me, I was letting excuses get in my way. Okay, it was like summertime. So I was like, ooh, cookout, ooh, ice cream, you know, like trips, I'm gonna eat whatever I want. Um, so I was just in this funk. And the funk was not just in my own fitness journey, but it was leaking into every part of my life. Okay, I wasn't disciplined with my own um, personal development and meditation and, and prayer life, okay, because I didn't feel good because I was eating crap um, and I wasn't sticking to a fitness program closely. I was responding the way that I didn't want to with my, with my child and my husband, you know, it was just like leaking everywhere, you guys. And then you think about your business. I wasn't being the best coach, right? Because if I don't feel good about myself and I don't feel good about my own journey, how do I feel like I can help other people on that journey, right? You can't help people on the journey if you're not doing it yourself, you guys, okay? So the other side of that was that my before and afters, every time I did a fitness program, and maybe you guys feel this way too, they look the same. 
they look the same, right? Like you gain, lose the same 10 to 15 pounds, you know? You're like, okay, I'm gonna do 21 day fix after a vacation. And I gained about six or seven pounds on vacation. And guess what? I lost the six or seven pounds, you know, after vacation because I did 21 day fix and I committed for three weeks. And then something, you know, gets you off track and you're like, okay, gain those five to six pounds back on and then I do it again. And it was like this vicious cycle for me. And I was sick of having the same before and after you guys. Okay, so 80 day obsession is the chance for you to stop that cycle, you guys. It's the chance to give yourself 80 days of treating your body the way it should be treated. If the word obsession scares you, take it out and say, you know what? This is 80 days for me to be fully committed to me and my journey, okay? To be selfish, to focus on me, okay? Yes? So it's also an opportunity for you to push yourself past those limiting beliefs of the fact that maybe you can't get any fitter than you are right now, right? The same before and afters. That was me. I was like, I just can't get past it. I can't get past it. I don't know. Like the, my best before and after was when I did the ultimate reset and I lost all my muscle, you know? It's like, I, I didn't want that, okay? So you have a chance to rebirth yourself on this fitness journey, you guys, to go back to being a client again. Or if you are a client, to really go 100% in and see what you're made of, you guys. Give yourself the permission to go all in and get selfish, okay? So I want you guys to think about, you know, how long you've been working with the Beachbody programs. For me, it's been eight years. About, no, probably like nine. No, eight and a half, because <laughs> I did Turbo Jam before I signed up as a coach. Um, but, you know, I think back about how excited I was, right? And I was in. I wanted to lose the 30 pounds after college, and I was in. I didn't have anything holding me back, okay? I wanted it, okay? So I want you guys to think about the last time that you fully 100%, okay? Not like 80% eating clean and then 20% eating crap, because that's not a real thing, okay? Like, the 80-20, I, I don't support it, okay? Maybe during the holidays, um, but you should not be eating 80-20, okay? So, just my belief. Because um, if you think about that, you guys, for 100 years, that's like 20 years of you, if I did the math right, 20 years of you eating crap total. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so um, think back to when you were 100% on your A-game, your nutrition, your fitness, nothing was getting in your way, okay? Over the 21-day fix, okay? Not just... 21 day fix, I love 21 day fix, love 21 day fix extreme, but I think that we have this focus of, okay, I can I can handle 21 days, and then I can take a couple days off, and then do 21 days again. No, 80 days, 90 days. When was the last time you fully committed to a program that was that long, you guys? For me, it had been years, years. I could do the 21 day fix, I could do 21 day fix extreme, I could do the ultimate reset, 21 days, three weeks, I can handle that, right? But then when 80 day obsession came and they said 80 days, but really with rest day, it's more like 90 something. Okay. They don't factor in your Sunday rest day. That was like, okay, that's like 21 day fix. Like what? Four and a half times. Holy crap. That's a lot of time. You can't think of it that like that way, that way you guys, because when you go in with that kind of mindset where you're like, oh my God, this is going to take forever, you're going to hate the journey. But if you go in and say, oh my God, why did it just get really dark in here? I realize my light's not on. Sorry, guys. But when you go in saying, okay, 80 days, 80 days is nothing. 80 days is like, what, two and a half months, you guys? That's nothing. That's nothing. In the grand scheme of life, that's nothing, you guys. And when you go in with that focus, it flies by. I remember looking at my husband and being like, oh my God, I'm already on day 45. And then I felt like I blinked and I was like, oh, it's day 78. I only have two days left. And it was like an emotional roller coaster because it was like you start out and you're like, oh my God, I don't know how this, I'm going to get through this. And at the end, you're like, I don't want it to end. I don't want it to end. And if you commit to this program, I guarantee you're gonna have that kind of feeling, you guys. You're gonna get to that end and be like, oh, nope, I don't wanna be done, so I'm gonna go for another round. I'm gonna do it again. That's what I did. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna jump back in. And a lot of the test participants did that. If you talk to some other people who have done test groups, they're like, I need a little, little break. Oh, I'll refocus. With 80 Day Obsession, you don't wanna stop. You just wanna keep going because of the results and how good you feel, okay? So for me, you guys, I wanted to prove to myself and to my team and to my clients 
that I couldn't do 80 days, okay? And for my husband, you know, like I wanted them to look at me like a badass and be like, oh my gosh, okay, if my coach can do it, if my wife can do it, I can do it too, okay? I also had a two-year-old looking at me and watching everything I do. I mean, if you ever see any of the videos I put up, she's got a, she can hold a plank like no other, okay? And they're watching everything. Your kids watch everything. So I wanted to, to show her that I could commit to something, okay? You can too, you guys, you can too, okay? So during the 80 days, you guys, I traveled four times, four times over the 80 days, and it would've been nice to just lock myself in my house and have my food all, you know, portioned out and everything like that for the 80 days. No, I, that's not living, okay? And so I had to say, I choose to eat this way. I'm not being forced to eat this way because while people say, okay, you're in a test group, you have to eat on, on point, I'll tell you, they did surveys throughout each phase. And it was crazy the amount of people who were not sticking to the nutrition to a T, you guys. And it's not like Beach Body told us, hey, you have to eat this way. They gave us the chance to, to have the choice, you guys. And you have that same choice, okay, to say, I am going to eat this way. I'm not being forced to eat this way. I'm choosing to eat this way. And it was like, when I did that switch in my mind, I'm choosing not to eat chocolate. I'm choosing not to drink alcohol. I'm choosing to follow how this nutrition goes. It was like, you get your power back, right? You have control over that. Um, so like I said, I traveled four times. One of the times was flying, so that was fun. They like, I had all my food packed and everything and in this big cooler and they they had to like take it through the scanner and the, the lady's like, what, what is this? And I'm like, well, it's ground turkey and quinoa. And she's looking at me like, you're crazy. <laughs> but, you know, you got to do what you got to do, you guys. And, you know, one of those those travel times, I, I went to Utah with my team. And I had all of them pitch in and help me eat healthy. And while I couldn't share the nutrition plan, and I still can't really share the nutrition plan with you guys, you guys have probably seen Autumn talk about the time to nutrition and all that stuff. It's still the portion containers, you guys. It's just basically her telling you when to eat certain stuff. Like when to eat your carbs and fruit and protein and when to eat your orange and blues. And, and that way you have it planned out throughout the day. So it takes the guesswork out. Okay. And I'll get into that in a little, in a little bit, but for me, I had my team. So if you're like getting around with friends and family and stuff throughout the 80 days, have them pitch in and create whatever meal you have set up for that left, that last meal or whatever. So for me, I had my coaches, you know, I knew that we could have a carb, a yellow, a green and an oil. Okay, just for my meal plan. And I knew that I had that every single night. And so the meals were focused on that, okay? So I think the way that you approach this plan is either gonna make or break you, okay? So let's talk about the workouts, then I'll get into the nutrition and all that stuff. So the workouts, you guys, I'm not gonna lie, they're really hard. They're really hard, really hard, okay? I just, like I told you guys, I'm, I'm doing it again right now and I'm like, oh my God, my booty is sore in places that I didn't know it could be sore. It's like I'm having it happen all over again, even in the second round, okay? So they're hard. They're longer than we're used to, okay? Me, before, I was like doing 30-minute workouts, and I was like, yeah, 30 minutes, out and done, okay? I'm sure there's a lot of you that do that as well, and that's okay. It's what we're used to. They're longer. They're 60 minutes usually, okay? Like between like... 45 to 60 minutes for the most part. Um, and that took some adjusting, okay? Because it's like, oh man, I gotta get up earlier. I gotta, you know, plan for a longer time. For me, like it was not good for when they put the workouts together. It was during my girl, my, my girl, my daughter's nap time. And I was like, that's my work time, but I have to be committed. So I have to stay on and get on live when they do it. You guys will have it already to you so you can pick what time you work out, you guys but they're longer, okay? So plan for it. Plan for having a 60 minute workout, okay? Um, they move at a lot faster pace, okay? So you guys have done Autumn's workouts. I mean, 21 Day Fix Extreme, uh, 21 Day Fix. I think 21 Day Fix is a little bit longer break, but I think 21 Day Fix Extreme and Chisel, how she like moves from one move to the next. Yep, that's it. For 60 minutes, you're basically moving through the whole time, okay? So if you have to take a break and pause it, that's okay, you guys. I did that. There was moments I have thyroid issues. I would have my heart rate monitor on, and I'm like, nope, 
I gotta walk in place, so I gotta slow down a little bit and catch my breath, and then I'll jump back in. That's okay, you guys, okay? You have to listen to your body. Um, the moves are different than what we've done, okay? They are different than what we've done. Um, usually when they come out with a new program, you're like, I've seen this move, I've seen this move, it's just in a different order. Mm. No, these moves are different. They are moves that maybe you've seen with like on crack. Okay, they're like crazy, crazy awesome. Okay, so get ready for like different moves for sure. Okay, um, now if you're decently active, you guys, and you've probably already seen Autumn talk about this, but I'm gonna say it again. If you are already decently active, I would, uh, a little obsessed comes out tomorrow. I would do a little obsessed and then do um, for the six days, because I think those are five days. For the six day, do the challenge from 21 Day Fix Extreme, okay? And then take a, a day off. But I would do that for three weeks. Do we have three three weeks? When I, as long as before um, ADD Obsession comes out. Okay, I think we have like two or three weeks. So I would do that if you are active right now. If you are not active, you guys, I wouldn't suggest starting with this program. This program is not in a beginner program. While there is a modifier, she's like modifier, but also like mood, doing the moves and stuff, okay? So this is not a beginning program. If you're a beginner, you are gonna get discouraged, okay? So it's not that you can't do this program. I want you to be ready for it, okay? So I would start with 21 Day Fix, okay? Start there, do one round. Then do the chisel calendar for the Masters Handler and Chisel. Then do 21 Day Fix Extreme. So do all of those programs, okay? So that would be a total of like, I think close to two, two and a half months. Then do two weeks of little, a little obsessed, okay? And then do 80 Day Obsession. You'll be ready for it then. Because if you jump in from being inactive or just having a baby maybe, I've had people ask me that, or you're pregnant and you wanna do um, 80 Day Obsession, no, you guys, no, you're gonna get frustrated. You're gonna get annoyed. You're gonna be like, I don't like this program and I don't want you to go in with that kind of feeling, okay? I want you to say, okay, I'm gonna get my body ready, get myself prepared and then give ADD Obsession my out, okay? Because this is not an easy program. Um, the other thing, you guys, like I said, is that it's totally okay to take breaks, okay? It's okay to take breaks, to catch your breath, to modify to go lower down in weight than you usually do because like I said some of these moves are complex where you're doing a couple different moves for one rep and I found that I was humbled in some things you know I might usually normally be able to bicep 12 to 15 pounds but maybe I had to drop down to 10 when we were doing reps of 15 because of the way that we were doing them okay so listen to your body okay and know that as long as you're feeling it and it's not painful um, you're gonna get results okay the other thing, you guys, is that they come out with worksheets, okay? So we had worksheets for the 80 days, and I printed them all out, and I tracked every time I worked out, you guys, and I think sometimes people forget to do this, or they're like, oh, it's just an extra step. Print them out, have them by your computer or your TV or wherever you work out, and follow it, you guys, okay? Because this is part of being obsessed. You have to show yourself progressing, okay? You can't go in and be like, I think I left, I lifted 12 pounds, so I'll do 12 and a half, or I'll do 15 this next round. Maybe you already did 15, okay, and you forgot that you bumped it up. You wanna make sure that you're progressing, okay? Um, the bands, you guys, I get a lot of questions about the bands. <sighs> the bands, you're gonna love, hate them, okay? I feel them, like the when I do bands, like when I do like, you know, the booty lift moves or anything like that. Um, without the band, you're like, oh, this is painful. You put the band on, you're like, oh my God, this is so hard. And start lower, start with a green, okay? Um, and work your way up. Don't try to do like two blues the first week because that's not a good idea, okay? Start lower and build your way up. The other thing is that they are gonna roll on you, okay? They are gonna roll on you. Um, there's been many times that I've had to be like, God grant me serenity to accept the change that I cannot change. You know, like, I get frustrated because they would roll even after being in the, the test group, you guys. It's just part of it. You got to find where they, they work best on your body. You know, like, after a couple weeks, I was able to figure out, okay, if I put them a little bit above my knee for my body personally, 
they're going to be good. Oh, if I just do a blue alone, it's going to roll because my legs are stronger. She says that, you know, if your legs are stronger, you should be having, or if you, if they're rolling more often, you got to make sure you have the right placement as well as enough. Okay. So some of you might have weaker legs and you have to start lower. Others, you might be like, I have really strong legs. And when I do a green the first week, they just roll. Okay, so maybe you need a green and blue, or maybe you need to just bump up to the blue. So make sure that you're paying attention to that stuff and giving yourself the chance to unroll them when they roll, you guys. Because if you just try to power through with them rolled up, you're not gonna get the full benefit of the workout. Okay, so make sure you unroll them, okay? Last thing about the bands, you guys, is that you're gonna want to be wearing capris or pants most of the workouts. This was a huge change for me. I am like a shorts girl. I sweat a lot <laughs> and I hate wearing capris or pants because I end up being like soaked and gross and blah. But through this program, you want to wear pants or capris for like the majority of the workouts because you're putting the bands around your legs. And while yes, you can wear shorts, it's going to hurt. Okay, like I've done it without pants before and I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to wear my capris and my pants. So the only workouts that you don't need work or you don't need pants for are the Saturday workouts for most of the rounds, I believe. I can't tell names, I don't think. Um, <laughs> there's one called Cardio Core. I'll just say that. Okay, that one you don't need pants for, I believe. And then obviously your rest day, um, you don't need pants for that. So there's a couple that you'll notice they don't have pants on or you don't use the bands around your thighs that you don't need pants for, okay? But I would plan on wearing pants for the most part. Uh, practicing self-care. So I know B Mindy's big about this and I am as well. Um, doing a lot of just relaxation and loving on yourself. And for a lot of people, this might be completely new to you. New to you and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't need to do that. You need to do self-care, okay? And what I mean by self-care, especially the first week of each round, you guys, you're gonna be sore, okay? You are going to be sore. And so I would highly suggest doing the performance line, okay? And I'm not just gonna say like, do the performance line because Beachbody told me to. No, I was completely like, I'm not doing anything that I haven't done research for. And I've tried to do the workouts without reco recovery and energize and hydrate. And I died. Okay, I was like so tired. I was so sore. I didn't have any, any energy at all. With the performance line, I'm a huge advocate now. Like I will never skip my Energize. I will never not have Hydrate unless I'm doing yoga and I don't really need that. Um, and recovery. It helps your muscles get replenished after your workout so you're not as sore. Okay, so I've been your guinea pig. I've tried it without recovery and with recovery and I'm way less sore when I do recovery after my workouts, okay? Um, take Epsom salt baths, you guys. Take Epsom salt baths, especially a couple times a week at the beginning of a round because when you're sore, you need to soak and get some of those toxins out of your body, okay? You don't have to soak forever, 10 to 15 minutes, um, but that was a huge thing for me. Or even just taking a little bit longer of a shower, okay? So if you're stressed for time and you're like, Meg, I can't take a bath at night because that's when I work my business or whatever, um, when you sit down to take a, sit down, when you go to take a shower, um, most of us stand up in a shower, but when you go to take a shower, maybe stay in there a couple minutes longer and let the water, you know, rinse you off. <laughs> so um, the other thing you guys is massages. Okay, so I'm telling you to go get massages. Um, I would suggest at least one per round. I am someone who I'm like, I don't want people touching me. I don't want to slow down long enough to let someone like give me a massage. I'm so glad that I did a massage at least once a month during this, this program because it really did help me release those toxins and get rid of the sore muscles and that sort of thing. If you are someone who is into like a morning routine, positive affirmations, you guys, with Miracle Morning. Um, that was something that I kept throughout this program because I woke up every single morning and told myself that I was going to stick to my nutrition and I was going to stick to the workouts, okay? Um, and then the last thing for your self-care, you guys, is just making sure that you're surrounding yourself with people who are doing it too, okay? Because through the 80 days, everyone – my family, my friends, everyone knew that I was on this program, okay? And if someone judged me and was like, are you serious, you're doing this? I'd be like, 
yeah, I am doing it. Okay, so be proud of it. Okay, but surround yourself with people who are going to support this. And if they're not going to support it, maybe they need to take a break from your life for 80 days. Okay, um, so my results, you guys. Actually, I don't want to talk about my results yet. I'm not sure what I would suggest doing for your results. Okay, so obviously you want to weigh yourself um, before, like your your weight, your inches, pictures, all that stuff. Okay, so you have it. Don't forget that, you guys. But during it, don't become obsessed with the scale. Do not become obsessed with the scale, you guys. Because while this program will help you lose weight, it's not focused on helping you drop 60, 70, 80 pounds, okay? It's focused on helping you build up a booty and lean out your stomach and create long, lean muscles, okay? So when you're doing that, it's not like you're losing a ton of weight, but you're losing the fat, okay? You're toning up, which is pretty amazing. So for me, I make sure I tell people, you know, I had about 10 to 15 pounds to lose, and I ate in my maintenance plan, okay? Like nutrition-wise, and I'll get into that in a second, but I ate in my maintenance plan almost the entire plan, you guys. And I personally did not really focus on the scale because the first week of 80 Day Obsession, like the very first week, week we started, um, and I had to drop a lot of inflammation and all that kind of stuff, I dropped six pounds like that. Okay, so think about it like when you've done a program, you probably lose the majority of your weight at the beginning, right? And then you're like, I kind of just plateau. That was me, okay? I plateaued um, for two and a half rounds or two and a half sections of it or whatever. And then the last two weeks of the plan, I dropped another four and a half pounds, okay? So don't fixate on the scale. Although my weight wasn't changing, I was seeing inches come off, I was seeing, um, myself get stronger like I was I think I started bicepping like you know bicep curls for like maybe eight to ten pounds and by the end I was doing 17.5 pounds like I've never been that strong you guys my legs were getting really strong and they still are like the amount of weight that I'm lifting is crazy so don't just fixate on the scale focus on the way your clothes are fitting focus on the fact that maybe you're doing more push-ups longer on your toes than your knees. Maybe you're able to have better form on the sliders. Maybe you're able to bump up the amount of weight that you're lifting with your legs or your arms. That's still progress, you guys. Um, Autumn was a big advocate for that when people would say, you know, my, my weight has stopped or I've gained weight or whatever. She'd say, are you lifting heavier? Are you able to do more reps? Are you able to have better form? That's progress, you guys. We overlook that part. You're still changing, okay? It might not be the ways that you're used to seeing, but it's still progress, okay? Um, okay, so nutrition-wise, you guys know it's time nutrition. Autumn did a video on her like page, uh, I believe a couple days ago, about time nutrition. And basically, I can't tell you a lot, but it breaks up how you have your portion containers, okay, so that you're not stuck with having an orange and blue at nighttime, like you're going to have your fats spread out throughout the day. Now, me being a nutritionist, you guys, I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. I am fixed, you know, I'm set in my ways, and I like my meals together in a certain way, and I don't want to do it. You know, like I was kind of like, mm, I'm not going to do the nutrition plan. Maybe you're thinking that, okay, and I'm going to tell you, get out of your own way. Be flexible, okay? Try something new. If you want something different, you have to try something different, you guys. I am like the worst with change, okay? All these changes with the websites and stuff lately, I've been like, I can't handle it more. I can't handle any more change. This program was like that. I was like, this is a huge change for me. Like I'm eating like, I used to save all of my, my uh, teaspoons and my, my orange and my blue for nighttime because I was terrified I would be starving at night. I'm like, I need all the fat at night. No, you guys, you have to spread it out throughout the day, okay? And then my carbs, you know, I thought that you had to stop eating carbs by a certain time of day and your fruit. You're gonna see with the plan, it's a little different than what you're used to, okay? But it works, you guys, give it a chance, okay? These, these test group participants that you're seeing who have amazing results, they follow the nutrition to a T, okay? So follow it, trust it, okay? Um, I kind of hinted towards the fact that I ate towards my maintenance plan. So when I do my calculations, and the majority of the people watching this are going to say the same thing, I fall into plan A automatically, right? And that's what, like, just like every 21-day fix, all those programs, it's like 1,200 calories. <laughs> 1,200 calories. Ooh, okay. So for me, I was like, 
I'm starving. I'm starving. It was like three or four days in. I was like, I'm going to eat my arm. I'm going to rip someone's head off. I'm not sleeping. Like I'm just, I'm hangry. Okay. And Autumn and the nutritionist said, bump up to your maintenance plan. And I was terrified you guys, because my maintenance plan put me in plan C. Okay. And that was 2,100 to 2,400 calories. And I was like, there is no way I'm going to be able to eat that much food and not be like super full and still seeing results. I was so scared, you guys. And the majority of the test, per test group participants ended up bumping up into their maintenance plan, you guys. And you saw the results. They got amazing results, you guys, and still lost weight and still lost inches, okay? And I felt good on plan C. I was like, I don't want to kill someone. You know, like this is the first time that I've been losing weight and I feel really good and I don't have any cravings and I feel like I have enough energy and it was because I was listening to my body. So don't be afraid to eat more, you guys. So I know Autumn will probably go through this with her weekly obsessed things during 80 day obsession. Make sure you watch those. But what I would suggest you guys is if you fall into a certain bracket, okay, or a certain plan and you get through like two or three weeks for the first phase, and you're like, oh my God, I am gonna kill someone. I'm so hungry. Next phase, you know, the next month, bump up to the next bracket, okay? Listen to your body or maybe bump up to your maintenance bracket, okay? All right, last thing, you guys. So for me, I personally lost, actually, I don't wanna go over that yet. I wanna share with you guys if there's someone who has thyroid um, issues. So I have thyroid issues and, you know, a lot of people say, so how are you fitting in your medication when you have to eat like five or six times in a day? That's a lot. I sacrificed, you guys. I said, okay, I might normally wake up at 6.30, okay, and then go down and, you know, take my pill and then wait an hour or two before I eat, whatever, okay? But now I would set my timer on my, or my alarm for like 4.35-ish so that I could take my pill, have it next to my bed with my water, okay, take my pill, and go back to sleep, okay, I'd go back to sleep, and then I would wake up, and I'd be ready to eat, so that once I ate, I only had to wait, wait like 20, 30 minutes to work out, okay, so you have to do a little bit of like being flexible, okay, you just need to change things up a little bit, but it's possible, okay, the other thing is like if you work out first thing in the morning, a lot of people are like, I, I work out and I like fast, you know, like I don't usually eat something before my workout, I was the same way, guys. I was like, this is hugely, like, uncomfortable. You know, like, I usually don't have food in my body when I work out. Like, I just don't like that feeling. Um, but I knew that I had to give it a try, okay? And so what I did is I, if you want a smaller meal, if you don't have an hour or two to kill in the morning and being able to move your workout back, take one of the smaller um meals, okay? And so Autumn shared this, so it's not new news, okay? She said, I think... She said to grab a yellow and a red, okay, and eat that and wait 20 minutes and then you can work out, okay? So you have a little bit of fuel in your body, you guys, okay? So don't knock it till you try it. You're going to be crazy surprised at how good you feel during your workouts when you actually eat, okay? Like I was like, oh my God, I'm never going back to fasting, okay? All right, so for me, over the last, you know, 80 days when we did this from the end of July to um, the end of October, I lost 10... 10.6 pounds and 10.5 inches, you guys. And it was crazy to me because while I, yeah, I lost 10 pounds, whatever, the way that my body looked, like the way that my arms looked and my legs looked and my booty looked and my abs, like I never thought that my body could look like that, okay? Especially after having a baby. And yours can too, you guys. Like it, you definitely, if you fully commit to 80 days, your body is going to look different. Now, if you have 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds to lose, you might have to do a couple rounds of this to get to the where you want to be, you guys, but you're definitely going to see progress, okay? Um, this plan definitely takes 100% no excuses, you guys, okay? Because if you can do that, if you can commit to 80 days of no excuses, okay, not slipping in a glass of wine or chocolate or whatever, but actually fully 100% focused on your workouts, your nutrition, your self-care, okay, you are going to see amazing results and you're going to see that you can do anything you put your mind to, okay? The amount of, God, like 
confidence that I got after this program and completing it and the way that I approach things with my clients and my coaches and just my family, it's so different, you guys. It's so, so, so different. Um, this program is like pregnancy. So <laughs> you guys are probably going to be like, what are you talking about? Okay, I got this from Autumn. It makes sense, okay? So the bro it's broken up into three phases, okay? So for those of you who have been pregnant, you're going to get this very well. The first trimester, you're excited, right? Everything is new and exciting and fun. And maybe you're starting to, you know, see your belly grow a little bit. And it's like still like a little cute bump, right? And that's how this program is, okay? First phase, you are excited. Everything's fresh and new and exciting. And, you know, you're seeing quick results, okay? And then phase two comes in. And you might see the majority of the people started to see it slow down, okay? And I was like, okay, I got to get through this phase too. It's like uh, second trimester of pregnancy. Not a lot is happening. Your stomach just keeps growing. You're starting to get uncomfortable and you're like, oh my God, I still have how long until I can see this baby? Same thing with this program, okay? Phase two, you're kind of like, I got to get through it, okay? The workouts are still awesome. They're still really fun. You just might not see as fast of results, okay? Because your body's starting to say, okay, what's going on? And then phase three, you're like, this is the end. This is the end. I'm so excited. I'm starting to see results again. Um, the, the type of lifting changes a little bit and the moves are different and you get into, you know, just different stuff, okay? And your body starts seeing changes again. Same thing with pregnancy. Trimester three, you're like, I am in the home run. I'm about to see this baby. I have a special, amazing gift at the end of this. Same thing with phase three, okay? So guys, just fully commit to this, okay? If you were someone who was kind of on the brink and you're like, I don't really want to do this. I have a, a trip to Cabo in March or whatever. Stop, okay? Just commit, you guys. Just commit. Stop having these self-limiting beliefs because it, all it is is just being scared that you're gonna fail, okay? And if you fully commit and say that you fall off for one meal, you guys, don't beat yourself up, okay? Just refocus and say, okay, maybe I had an extra yellow here or I slipped up and had a glass of wine because I was stressed out over my baby. You didn't throw everything out the door, okay? It would be better if you did 100%, okay? But you didn't throw everything out the door. You still can get refocused and get results, okay? So, Mindy, I think that's it. Yes, Meg. That was so important. Like, I'm texting with Tara Violet right now. I'm like, okay, I'm so going to do this. Like, I'm so committed. Not that I wasn't before, but like, like you were saying, I had self-limiting beliefs about this because I was, the, I am, as of right now, I can't tell you, when you said that, Meg, when was the last time you did like a 90-day program? It was Shalene Extreme, like my second or third round of that probably uh, I don't know years ago, you know what I'm saying? And not that I haven't done Shalene extreme 90 days again, but it's never been like this. It's never been like that. I followed the nutrition plan. It was like, you know, if I wanted to do something one night, I went and had a date night and maybe had a glass of wine. Like I never was like how I was the first two times that I went through that program in the last couple of years, it's been 21 days, 30 days, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and sure, that's that's uh, that's just I think we've had a mindset shift mm -hmm. with these 21 day programs and stuff, which is there's nothing wrong with that or the 30 minute workouts. I tell Tara all the time, like, oh, my God, my workout today is 45 minutes. I don't know if I could do it. Tara's just like, oh, my God, do it. You're just like my mindset is so 30 minutes, 30 minutes. But um, I, that's why I think this is not only going to be good for me, but I feel like there's a lot of people who are like me who mm -hmm. need this. So everything you said was great. I just have a couple of questions maybe for you. Um, one, a couple of things I'll just mention that stuck out at me when you were talking. Just think of it this way, guys. Like when she was talk, talking about this, you might have doubts. You might have things like, oh, I have to go on vacation. What am I going to do? Blah, blah, blah. But just think of it this way. You're going to push yourself like never before, right? But then that, what that equals is that you're going to get results like you never have before. So if you're willing to step outside your comfort zone and right, we should all be doing those type of things every single day. And I, I preach this all the time and here I am not doing it when it comes to my daily workouts. Cause I feel like, well, I'm working out, but why not push myself out of my comfort zone? And why don't you push yourself out of your comfort zone? Like you never have before. So you can achieve results that you never had before. Um, 
Um, Meg also said tomorrow, Little Obsessed comes out. So if you are a beat, if you have Beachbody on demand, you'll have access to that. Uh, if you don't have Beachbody on demand and you're a customer, uh, make sure you go to the person who invited you to this video to watch this video, or if you found it on YouTube or whatever, and ask your coach to give you information about that so you can jump in on that. Um, I think it's great too that I, I know for me, Tara, a lot of other leaders on the team, we're also doing. Oh, Hudson's walking in the door and he's sleeping. Um, we're all doing the little obsessed uh, prior to prep ourselves. So that's a great idea to do that. Um, okay, so here's what I have a question. You said it's probably not somebody who, it's for somebody who just had a baby. What if the person was super active during pregnancy? Then what would you say? So Brittany Leggett, um, Ashley Smith, they, I believe Ashley Smith's baby was like, then a couple months old. Um, so as long as you're cleared with your doctor, like I'm like the last person to be like, oh, sorry, you can't do it because you just had a baby. Because I jumped in and did hammer and chisel right after Tenley. Okay, like six week mark, I was like, okay, I'm doing hammer and chisel. Just listen to your body. Listen to your body. Okay. Follow the modifier. Make sure that everything's good to go. Make sure you're eating enough, especially if you are breastfeeding. Um, I believe. And you'd have to ask Brittany Leggett. I think she has a video on this on YouTube about breastfeeding, you guys. Um, and she got amazing results. But I think they ate the maintenance plan, I want to say. So make sure you're eating enough, you guys. Like, don't try to just lose all the baby, right, baby weight right away. And just listen to your body because it's a lot of ab work. It's a lot of, you know, the booby, booty, booty, <laughs> booty, and um, <laughs> arms and legs you can totally do. But just be careful with the ab stuff. You know, and give yourself some grace. Okay. The other thing that you said that I wanted to pick, uh, kind of say something about was the the vacation thing. So I'm the kind of person that I'm like, I'm going on vacation. I'm eating all the food that I don't normally eat. And how many of us do that, right? We're like, I eat so healthy, and then I go on vacation, and I just got to throw it out at the window because I never go on vacation, and I got to enjoy this. What is that? Like, what is that? Mm -hmm. I had to break that mentality with doing the test group during vacation and I felt so good during my vacation right like I had enough energy to do everything because I was eating healthy and I didn't come home and say oh my god okay now I gotta refocus and I gotta lose the five to six pounds I came home and I continued to see results so it's just a mindset shift you guys like to just say like okay I, I'm still going to eat healthy, you know, like you're still going to feel good and you're still going to get results and you're still going to have a good vacation. Like why does food have to be like one of those issues, you know? Yeah. Uh, and also too, um, I was just talking about this also with Tara because I'm actually going to be going on vacation. So I was like, the food thing is not an issue for me. Like, I just know that like, let's just say normally when people go on vacations, they usually want to get into a swimsuit and usually the foods that you cheat on while you're on vacation, in my opinion, is probably has gluten, dairy, corn, all these things that could cause infl or, you know, things that your body isn't used to because it maybe isn't uh, serving to your body, which that what that ha what happens when you eat those things is your body starts to get inflamed, which mm -hmm. bloating is inflammation. So then when you're in your swimsuit, you're on vacation, you worked your butt off to go on this vacation, look good in a swimsuit, and then the night before you ate a bunch of crap and now you're all inflamed. So it's just like, that's just another thing to think about as a mindset shift is to just, I mean, you and I, I like that you said this too, Meg, is that you get to choose. So everyone can just choose to do what they want, but challenge yourself, move yourself, move outside your comfort zone, even when it comes to the nutrition stuff, because nutrition is going to that's the thing that's going to change your body like it really is it's going to change how you feel the energy levels the mm -hmm. the inflammation in places that you didn't even know that could have inflammation you know so just think of it that way that that's a really good point i'm glad and then another question i had was the breastfeeding thing so thank you for answering that um i love that you guys include self-care love that you guys and so one thing that stuck out to me when you talked about the self-care thing is use this as your couple times a week or monthly uh, reward. Because I think a lot of people are like, if I do this as this on Fridays, it's my cheat day. And that's like the reward for working hard all week. But that's just uh, not saying that you shouldn't do that. You guys choose what you want to do. But I feel like that is just making it harder for you to jump back, get back on track the next week. So if you want it to be easier for you to 
stay on track, to create this habit, to have the mindset shift, to continue to see results, to continue to feel better, use the self-care stuff as the reward. Like giving your, light some candles or essential oils and stuff and get in the bath and have rituals behind that. Like maybe some affirmations or intentions behind the bath and make it like your own personal little reward. Uh, another thing is I, I have a sauna, but I know a lot of people do not. I'm just we do for my daughter Lily, um, going someplace to do an infrared sauna, that's a great reward. The performance line, like she said, was a great reward. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, I know Oprah. I'm reading Oprah's new book, and she says showering is like meditation. Is a time for where she meditates in the shower, just paying attention and being in the present moment, feeling the hot water on your skin. And th you'll, I come up with my best ideas, and a lot of people say this, they come up with their best ideas in the shower, and that's because you not you don't have social media. Your phone's hopefully outside your shower. You're just there alone, feeling the water on your skin and stuff. That could be a time where your self care, focusing in, on the present moment, and that's why those ideas come because you're listening to those nudges, your intuition, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it. So those are just great th things. I love that you you included that in the program. Um, and then she said not to focus on the scale. You guys, something that I do is weekly pictures. Like if you ever see me post selfies of like my stomach or whatever, that's just me trying to seem, I don't, I haven't weighed myself in, I don't know how long, probably when I had Hudson, I had to get on the scale at the doctor's office. Honestly, I just don't weigh myself. Instead, I look at pictures because I know the scale when you lift and I know this program has lifting and stuff and I'm, I'm all about like having strength training in your routine. I know that the scale doesn't really isn't accurate because you could be gaining muscle or retaining water and yada, yada, yada. So yeah, I think weekly pictures and at the same time, I love that Meg said this, don't get hung up on all the negative, which we're humans. I get it. But if we make it a point when we start this program, it's not going to serve you for 80 days. This will serve you for your entire life. If you change your mindset and start focusing on what's good, like not the scale, just because a scale hasn't moved, Meg said, maybe focus on that you've got to move up in a weight, uh, that you're doing more reps or you're doing this better. You could do more push-ups, whatever it is. Try during this 80-day program, have this be like your 80-day mindset shift challenge as well, where you're focused on what you are doing well and pick even if it's the tiniest little thing to be grateful for that's and and oprah says that in her new book it's all about gratitude it's all about appreciation um self-care all that stuff that is going to serve you long past this 80-day workout program seriously it's going to serve your family your your health everything okay so the last thing i'm going to mention then if meg you want to add anything before we close it out um is so cool that when Meg was unsure, usually when you start, a, I know when I did my workout program, uh, my 90 day workout program of Shaleen Extreme, I pretended like I was in a test group and I was like really strict about like just following the plan. Wow, following the rules, right? And so I was really good about that, but there are some things that I had questions about like, oh my God, I feel really hungry, is this normal? How amazing was it that Meg had that support group, that community and Autumn and the nutritionist to uh, to be able to tell her, Meg, yeah, if you're hungry, listen to your body, bump yourself up to the maintenance plan or to plan C or whatever, and we'll learn more about that as we get the program launched. But what's cool about that is that that is why these people, For I'm talking to coaches right now, that is why coaches, you need to get a pack and you need to get an Autumn's group, number one, because you need that support. You yourself, as a, Meg's been a coach for eight years. She needed that support. She needed that, that community. Coaches, you need that as well. So get a pack so you can get into Autumn's group and have that same community that Meg had. Now, if you're not a coach and you're just listening as a client or a customer or somebody who's just interested and found this on YouTube, find yourself a coach because they have, community, they have built communities like Meg, myself, Tara, Darby, all the coaches on our team. We have built these communities where we can invite you into the group. So when you do have questions about your food intake or certain moves or modifications, or am I even ready for 80 day obsession or should I start here? These questions that arise, we're there to help you and so is that community. Okay, so that was the last thing I wanted to mention. It's so great to have 
somebody there that knows what's up that can that you can bounce ideas off of and brainstorm about this stuff and um, they're there to support you so make sure you guys get in a group if you're a coach get an autumn's group if you're a client or somebody interested in this get yourself a coach so you can be a part of a community all right Meg do you have anything you want to add before we close this out um, I think the last thing you guys is just you know if you look you know it's December 19th okay we're almost at the end of 2017 and if you look at the way that your business is right now, okay, if you're a coach or if you're just a client or coach and you're looking at your own physical fitness and the way your body is right now and you're not feeling good and you're wondering why, you've got to do something different, okay? Like me, I was stuck in my old ways. You know, I had a routine and habit of how I was eating, okay? And I would maybe take too many spoonfuls of peanut butter. Of course, that was going to affect my results, okay? So you have to try something different, you guys. Like if you're a coach and you're wondering why your business is not growing, when's the last time you fully committed to your own journey, okay? Like you hear people say that, but do you actually do it? For me, it was like, let me hit myself over the head because of course my business is not going to continue to grow if I don't go first, if I don't model what I expect other people to do, right? So just my thing, you know, my two cents is that you have to go first. You have to go and show people that they can do it too. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Meg. That was such a good point. I'm glad that you said that. It's all about uh, you focusing on yourself first and doing your own crap first and the rest will follow. That you will inspire so many people. Even if you're just a customer, you will inspire so many people by just doing it yourself leading by example and sharing it with those around you. Even if you're not vocally, share, you know, verbally saying this to other people, they're gonna watch and they're gonna see, they're gonna see your personality change, your energy change, your every, your body change, of course. So thank you so much, Meg. This was so informative. I can't wait to share it with the world because everyone needs to hear this. This program is gonna be phenomenal. I just thank you for your time away from your family and I will, uh, oh, everyone who has, who, got on this call, you already have the link. So that's a recording. So make sure you share this with other people. I think a lot of people need to hear this because this was, this was a great call. All right. Thanks, Meg. And I will talk to you guys next week.